Hello, everybody. It's Angelica Baum, your relationship coach, back with another topic for you. If you're new here, remember to click that subscribe button and that notification bell so you can be part of our incredible community. Today, we're delving into a topic that affects us all, five losing strategies in relationships. But most importantly, we'll explore how to steer clear of these pitfalls and foster healthy connections. Before we dive in, let's talk a bit about the fundamental cycle of all relationships. Harmony, disharmony, repair, or connection, disconnection, reconnection. The stance of closeness and disruption and then return to closeness plays out in both subtle and significant ways in all our relationships. Unfortunately, in our love relationships, we often resort to strategies that are not just useless, but actually harmful to the connection we crave. So here are five losing strategies that are in the way of connecting with your partner. Number one, being right. One of the common pitfalls is wanting to be right or needing to be right. Arguments about who remembers things accurately or who has the correct perspective can lead to endless battles. But as couples therapist Terry Real puts it, objective reality has no place in personal relationships. It doesn't matter who's right or wrong. And psychotherapist Stan Tatkin warns that our memory is not going to be accurate anyways. And that has two reasons. Number one, how our brain records our experiences. And the second reason is what happens when we recall the memory. When we have an experience, it's being recorded in fragments, not as a continuous action like a video recorder would do it. It's also influenced by our current state of mind and our perspective or perception. Our left brain is a great storyteller. It fills in these blanks between these fragments or snippets with feelings and meaning. All memory is filled with non-memory elements. That is why the original memory of two people is already different to begin with. They have recorded slightly different snippets and have given the events a different meaning. Recalling a stored event means we're adding more about how you feel when you remember something creates a new memory that covers the old one. Now we're dealing with a new remembrance of the old memory. Every time you recall something, you're changing that experience. That means memory is highly state dependent. It is influenced by how you felt when it happened and how you feel in the moment you recall it. So when you find yourself arguing with your partner about what happened, don't cling to memory as if you know the truth. The one thing you can count on is that your memory and their memory are both flawed. So don't let the need to be right ruin your relationship. Losing strategy number two, control. Trying to control your partner can manifest in direct or indirect ways. Of course, the controlling part is a protective part that's trying to cover up our anxiety and fears. So have some compassion with yourself and others when you encounter control and work on going more with the flow and allowing others to make their own choices, whether you like those choices or not. Why is that important for our relationships? Control often fosters resentment, especially if your partner does not speak up. And when I think of control and manipulation, that reminds me of my grandmother. My grandmother was a strong and resourceful woman, and she was very skilled in getting things done through manipulation. And back in her time, she was born in 1909, it might have been one of her only ways as a woman to have her needs met. But times have changed. And we need to let go of these dysfunctional patterns that have been passed on from generation to generation in favor of open communication. Destructive strategy number three. That is what Terry Real calls unbridled self-expression. What he means is venting and dredging up past offenses and linking them to current issues. Instead, short and sweet is the recipe 
that allows your partner to stay open, non-defensive, and respond positively. If you're a parent, you know, if you overwhelm your child with past mistakes, that doesn't lead to change. The same applies to our partners. When we went about past issues, it just leaves them feeling lacking, helpless, overwhelmed, not motivated to change. Instead, it leads to resignation, to that attitude of, I cannot make my partner happy anyways, no matter how hard I try. Let's continue exploring the last two strategies that are losing strategies. Number four, retaliation. Revenge or getting even can be overt or covert. And this only leads to a vicious cycle of blame and resentment. Retaliation often resembles a tit for tat approach. You did this, so I will do this. Or you didn't do this, so I won't do that. Or it can even mean something like my partner had an affair. Now I'm going to have an affair on them. We think that hurting the other person the way they have hurt us will make them understand our pain. But punishment never brings understanding or accountability. It merely perpetuates conflict. And losing strategy number five, withdrawal. Withdrawal means one person leaves the field. That can be the refusal to address an issue or opting out of a particular aspect of a relationship. For example, refusing to have sex. Or it can mean checking out of a relationship entirely. When the later happens, the relationship is often near its end. In any case, withdrawal or stonewalling, as Dr. John Gottman would call it, leaves my partner hanging. They feel shut out, alone, and abandoned. And often the result is that that shut out partner spirals into anxiety. Withdrawal is unilateral and creates a rapture. And that can look like a stubborn distant taking or provocative distant taking. Of course, we can be compassionate again with ourselves and others when this happens, because this withdrawal happens due to a protective part inside of us that's saying, let's get out of here. I need to escape that pain. Withdrawal is totally different from taking a needed and conscious time out when you're in in an interaction with your partner and the conflict is escalating. That's what Terry Real would call responsible distance taking. Conscious or responsible distance taking means letting your partner know that you love them, but that you need space, that you need a break, and also when you will be back to continue the conversation. In that case, you help your partner not to spiral into anxiety or feel abandoned. Now let's take a moment to understand the impact of these five losing strategies. Each of these strategies erodes trust, creates resentment, and moves us further away from the loving and supportive connection that we want with our partner. Out of fear of vulnerability, we end up losing what we most long for, connection, safety, and true intimacy. So what strategies can nurture healthier and more connected relationships? It starts with reminding ourselves ever so often that our partner is not our enemy, but our ally. Instead of falling into these five losing strategies, we need to connect from heart to heart. As a relationship coach, I've seen many couples transform their relationships by understanding their patterns, often individual patterns, but their similarities, and shifting towards healthier strategies, learning how to connect. It's a journey of personal growth as individuals and as a couple, but the rewards are immeasurable. Let me wrap up this video with practical steps for a nurturing connection. Number one, practice active listening and empathy. Hear your partner's perspective and validate their feelings. Number two, choose understanding over wanting to be right. It's never about who's right or wrong, but it's about finding a solution or finding a compromise that meets both your needs. Number three, 
communicate your needs and feelings respectfully and clearly. Be concise and to the point and focus on the present issue. Number four, replace retaliation with understanding and forgiveness. Seek to resolve conflicts rather than perpetuating or escalating them. And number five, avoid withdrawing. Instead, engage in responsible distance taking. Take a time out when you need space, when you need to calm your nervous system down and communicate to your partner what you're doing. For guidance on how to uh, do a time out successfully, you can check out my video on that topic. You also want to watch out for the video, Five Winning Strategies in Relationships, where I'm giving you further insights into what works well in our relationships. Thank you for joining me today. Be kind to yourself as you identify your default strategies. And keep in mind that growth is a continuous and lifelong process. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and share it with those who could benefit. Don't forget to subscribe for more engaging discussions. And I will see you in the next video.